Good. What's up? Noisy, isn't it? Noisy. That just kind of makes it worse, doesn't it? You kind of turn up the noise on something that uh, doesn't have enough gain to begin with. Gain! Oh my god. Low gain, high gain. Low gain, high gain. Oh, that makes so much sense! Um, yeah, wait, well, in the case of uh, radio, we're talking about waveform instead of uh, actual, we are talking about size too, like a, a, a quarter wave uh, Yagi antenna has got better gain than uh, eighth wave Yagi antenna. Yagi antenna is directional, it has a reflector, director, and uh, a driver. Um, already gone over photo sites endlessly. Let's uh, do an introduction to um, ISO. Now ISO is uh, really a pain in the crotch and it never should have been brought over from film. I mean it just never should have. You know film ISO is actually a physical film emulsion like ISO 400, ISO 600, it's up to 1600 with some big uh, silver halides uh, you know, in the digital imaging world, ISO is just a different way of expressing gain. Um, it is the case we got three different types of gain that we need to go over. And you'll not find this or read this anywhere, and it doesn't make any sense to me at all. It's like, why is nobody talking about this? They either don't know or they don't care. When it comes to taking really good photographs, it ultimately doesn't matter. But if you know the science behind what the hell ISO is, it is going to help you make, take better photographs. I mean, that's undeniable. In the case of film, you know, the silver, the size of the silver halide grains was the emulsion that actually uh, affected uh, what you could do when it was E over T. Now, if you don't understand this really simple fact, and uh, this is as simple as it gets, um, that every sensor and every camera is only E over T. And uh, that's exposure over time. Exposure, of course, being uh, in your aperture and your shutter, but it's also I which is an intensity or a gain over a given period of time such as the size of the photo site. You know, we got a large photo site here, it's going to gather more light over the same period of time. It's kind of simple, right? This is a primary mirror of a reflector telescope versus, say, a smaller photo site of a mirror right here. You know, of, uh, this is a secondary of a uh, telescope. So something's bigger, meaning photo sites, not sensors. Okay, let's not go over that crap anymore you know, has more gain, right? Over the same period of time, right? In other words, I can do, let's say, two-second exposure of some distant star. And if these are both mirrors of collecting that starlight, um, over two seconds, this is going to gather uh, more, have better gain than this is, right? Pretty simple. Pretty simple to understand. So let's try to understand the gain, uh, excuse me, ISO from a really, really simple uh, principle. Now here's a question. What is the difference between a visible light captured by your camera and uh, radio wave signals? What's the difference between the two? Not a damn thing. Not a damn thing. Well, you're going to say frequency, but that's the case with the uh, regular light as well. We're talking about a spread difference between the uh, blue end spectrum and uh, red end spectrum of light. Now let's take a look at the something else. We're talking about noise floor, and this is going to be really simple. You can see it right here. You see these two waveforms? I've got them superimposed right now. We can look at this uh, in two different ways. We can look at it in terms of exposure. Let's say we got one camera. We have it set at uh, ISO, um, ISO uh, 200 at a, a, a wider aperture and a, 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 a slower shutter speed. We have more gain here. It would be this waveform sticking way the hell out here, right? So the difference between a noise floor right here, it's right along the middle, and the null point of that middle is like the camera turned off. Nothing, okay? This is a noise floor. The thing of the noise floor is like grass that's sticking up. If you don't have decent exposure, and I'm not talking about ISO right now, then it doesn't peek its head out above the grass. That means everything gets lost in this. You understand that? Kind of like the radio. If I don't have it properly tuned, or if I don't have enough uh, gain, ah, more gain, less gain, more gain, bigger is better, right? now. <laughs> You're not fishing with a long enough fishing pole, as I said, right? 
and someone else is going to go, eh, it's not how deep you fish, it's how you wiggle your worm. Well, in the case of uh, photography, it is how deep you fish. <laughs> in this case, uh, what sort of gain you have. Now, uh, there are three uh, different types of gain, and they're going to be really simple, you're going to understand it, and no one else is going to talk about this. Why? Because they don't know, or they're, there's something wrong with them upstairs. Uh, my background and... Uh, in uh, ham radio and messing around with stuff uh, is very helpful because when it comes to like say radio astronomy for example not that I got into that um, and uh, photography you know when it comes to signal gain and stuff I mean all of that's pretty much 90 percent the same there are a lot of little pissy differences since we're talking about gathering uh, visible light instead of uh, radio waves um, but it's all still EMR there's no difference between radio waves and visible light, except for frequency. It's all the same crap. All the, it's like saying it's no difference between uh, ice and snow and steam. It's all water, right? Well, duh. Well, at least I hope it's duh. Let's talk about two different things. Physical gain, three different things. Uh, physical gain, applied gain, which is ISO. Gain is ISO for all intents and purposes. What we're talking about, three different things here. And then firmware gain. SNR firmware and post-processing. In other words, after the 80 converters, uh, there is, since noise has certain frequencies, there is applied uh, noise cancellation that goes on, but you can also still do a ton more of it uh, in post-processing, like with Topaz, Topaz plugins for Photoshop, where you're actually removing out a lot of like a high ISO noise or just, uh, you know, nasty noise. You can denoise, you know, your images. I mean, most people know that. Now, here's something I came up with that I want you to remember. It's exit, like an exit sign, right? E-X-I-T. E, exposure, okay, shutter speed and aperture, right, okay, exposure. X, physical gain, physical gain is light intensity, like how good a light uh, lens is at transmitting the uh, same light over the same period of time, um, with the same aperture as another lens, okay, so we got intensity. And we also have photosite gain here, larger photosite over the same period of time gathers more light. Same period of time, same aperture, same shutter speed, a larger photosite on the sensor, gathers more light period undeniable irrefutable uh, i intensity which i just mentioned and time um, it is the case that uh, something that you should uh, understand is that uh, when it comes uh, to god in photography native saturation i.e physical saturation is everything it is god that means that uh, what occurs after the fact uh, regarding uh, gain applied after the actual physical exposure or the native exposure vis-a-vis -vis ISO um, all you're doing is actually applying gain to everything instead of having better exposure here we have let's say a 10 dB gain on a DX sensor here and here on the shorter waveform then uh, say uh, you know 20 or 30 dB gain on either an FX and you can look at this two different ways on this waveform got the noise floor here with the blue rope <laughs> let's just say this is all the same sensor same everything right we have uh, a, a better exposure here so we have a huge gap between the noise floor let's just keep it simple let's say we got 40 decibels between the noise floor and the signal right oh that means that the signal is sticking its head way above the grass on both ends of the waveform right Okay, let's well, say we got a crappier exposure in low light or whatever with the same camera, blah, 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 blah. And we only have 15 or 20 dB uh, gain uh, between the noise floor here and here. That means that if you keep applying a higher ISO using the exact same aperture and a shutter speed, what happens is that you're going to be applying a different type of gain. It's applied gain, gain as uh, used in a receiving radio. Um, it is the case, let's talk about some of the fallacies that people understand about ISO. Uh, using a higher ISO, pay close attention, uh, does not make your camera's digital sensor more sensitive. It does not. It does not make it more sensitive to light. Once that sensor is made, that's it. Okay? ISO does not make your camera's digital sensor more sensitive to light. Anybody who tries to convince you uh, otherwise on this is just a crack-smoking hippie and they're just flat out wrong. Um, ISO numbers have no connection in any way, shape, or form to the reality, really, of how digital sensors work. This crap never should have been carried over from film. Um, they did that to keep uh, people's brains in check. It's like, well, I know ISO because I've been shooting film for years. Yeah, well, it's digital ISO. It's a new type of ISO. Well, 
this is different, okay? ISO is gain. Gain is ISO. But we have a different form of gain in the form of native or physical gain via intensity of light, like say with the good lens, with the exact same aperture. And uh, the size of the photosite. Bigger photosite, better gain. It's physical gain or native gain, okay? That's one thing. Now, the ISO is you're applying everything after the fact. So let's just look at this now as a DX sensor versus an FX sensor. Same light, same setting, same shutter, same aperture speed, same lens, same everything. You don't have, obviously, the high ISO performance. Because what is, high I, what is ISO? Is applying gain to everything, the noise floor and everything. It's okay to amplify the noise floor some because uh, noise has certain frequencies that can be dialed out by the SNR firmware. It can be dialed out by you in Photoshop. But it is the case that if you have to, you see you've got a lot more fudge room here than you do, yeah, right? DX photosite, FX photo. This is why a full frame sensor, all of them except the Canon 5D, which is a full frame sensor with uh, DX photosites, you have more fudge room. You see, you got more fudge room right here. It's kind of like giving yourself a latitude, like if you're going to uh, skydive uh, and uh, you're going to pull your ripcord a certain period of time, well, you've got more uh, fudge room, and I used to skydive all the time. If you, like, pull your ripcord at 2,000 feet, then, like, some of the idiots, including myself, they would, like, wee, they pull the ripcord, like, really short. You don't have much fudge room right there before you go splat. And what happens is you amplify this ISO, amplification of everything. But, you know, a lot of that noise is dialed out. But if, you're, if the fudge room is really small like this and you amplify everything with the ISO, I'm going to crank up the ISO because it's really bad light. Wah! Everything gets lost in the noise floor. Not everything, but uh, the uh, important stuff, the stuff in the shadows, um, the micro contrast gets shot to hell. Let's take a look at these two waveforms. Like I said, there's two ways of looking at it. You can look at this as FX sensor and this is DX sensor, or you can look at this as the same... Um, DX sensor or same FX sensor. We have better exposure here and we have worse exposure here. It's too close to the noise floor. <laughs> Stuff gets lost. Don't have as much fudge room. Um, so uh, when you amplify the signal, you're amplifying the noise. Thankfully, noise is a set of frequencies which, which can be dialed out yes, in our firmware and in the post-production software. The bottom line is that ISO and gain are the same thing. But well, we're talking about applied gain, okay? Physical gain, applied gain, and SNR firmware and post-processing gain, okay? Physical gain, like I said, is light intensity, better lens, better uh, transmission, uh, which uh, doesn't matter for a tremendous amount. I mean, you just got to crap your lens with uh, worse micro contrast, which is really important. But the important thing is you got larger photos. So you got better physical or native gain. That's why a full frame sensor with full frame photo sites has better dynamic range. We'll go over this in the next video. And has better, um, uh, has a better high ISO performance because you got a big fudge factor here between the noise floor and the actual signal. All things being equal, which of course they never are, but it is the case you got better. And it's going to depend on camera to camera. How much more of a fudge factor do you have between here and here um, uh, on the noise floor? Well, this is why, for example, um, photojournalistic cameras like the Nikon D3, the D4, and the current D5 have, you know, a big ass fudge factor. They got big old honking uh, photo sites, and uh, they're they're designed to have a huge fudge room in even ultra ultra crappy light, so that you're able to extract all the details, and uh, when you actually uh, apply um, high ISO you still have enough fudge factor where you have uh, all your signal to the very best possible, uh, you know, the best of all possible outcomes, of course. Um, so applied gain is ISO. Exposure raises signal gain, obviously. You got better exposure, more light, uh, more aperture, wider open. You got better exposure. That's your native gain. Now the ISO or the applied gain, that's raising everything. It is applying everything. Okay. You're talking about uh, giving yourself better exposure versus amplifying everything after the fact. ISO raises everything after the fact. Noise and all. Well, thankfully, noise has frequencies which can be dialed out. Dialed out in the SNR firmware. You can dial it out in post. 
But, you know, that gets to be only so much fun for so long. You kind of don't want to take noisy pictures all the time that you have to correct the noise out of. Eh. And eventually it fails. You run into uh, issues where there's failure. Because uh, what is not there, you have really bad exposure, bad lighting. You crank the, well, I'm going to get camera shake. I'm going to crank the ISO way the hell up. And uh, use a really fast shutter speed, so you're going like this, 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 and you end up where the noise floor and the signal are like this. And when you go to apply that incredibly high ISO, then you've got the noise floor and the actual signal, like of a spread of only 5 dB of difference. When you go to apply the uh, gain to it in post-processing, you can't make appear what isn't there to begin with. There is a lot of nearly magical stuff with Photosight and Lightroom, but it still cannot manifest what the hell isn't there. I mean, it is the case that you can underexpose, depending on the camera, like five stops. And then uh, apply gain in post-processing, which is no different than applying the gain by eh, cranking up your ISO. But you're going to run into issues of color issues and banding issues and pixelation issues. Um, so nothing. When it comes to uh, exposure, um, native saturation without overexposure and blowing your highlights is God. I mean, that's it. If you don't have native gain, you don't have anything. You know, physical native gain equals the light intensity and photosite. So I understand exit, like I said, exposure, X, photosite gain, I, intensity, aperture, and time. Um, if you don't understand this, you won't understand anything. As I said before, every sensor, every camera is only E over T. Exposure over time. Exposure over time. So what the hell is ISO? Applied gain after the fact. You can say at the fact. If someone wants to say at the fact, that's fine. I say after the fact, but it's not native. It is cranking up. You either have the fudge factor here or you don't have the fudge factor here, looking at this waveform. Like I said, you can look at it two different ways. Better exposure, worse exposure on the same FX camera. Better exposure, worse exposure on the same DX camera. Or we can look at it another way. Oh, isn't that really simple? We can look at this as the same lens on a DX, the same lens on an FX, the same exposure. And uh, look, DX, FX. This is why the FX sensor with FX photosites has better high ISO performance and better dynamic range. Um, FX uh, DX sensors have actually gotten significantly better. But still, the huge photo... That's why the new Canon 5D has got some big old honking photo sites on it. It is designed to be a photojournalistic camera for, you know, shooting a well digger's fanny, you know, at 3 o'clock in the morning with uh, no speed light illumination. Not literally, but you get my point. It is for really, really, really nasty photojournalistic typical Typical photojournalists uh, have issues with really, really crappy light. And the D5 has some big old honking photo sites to say, screw it, man, crank up uh, crank uh, up the shutter speed and uh, I'll still capture it. And you'll be able to pull out all that detail in the post-processing, which is the case. So noise floor is uh, where critical low light is lost when jacking up the ISO and increasing the shutter and or increasing the aperture. The gain of the photo sight is fixed. Once that sensor is manufactured, it's it. It's in there. It's in your camera. Native, uh, the native uh, gain is not going to change on your camera. Um, ISO should never have been applied to digital photography. And we'll go over this and a lot of other stuff. We'll talk about dynamic range versus signal to noise ratio. But understand that uh, you are not, I don't care if you argue with me or not, you are not um, uh, increasing the sensitivity to your digital sensor by uh, using a higher ISO. That uh, is not occurring on any camera. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you later. Okay, bye.